a likely short uh, recording on this group, Rage Against the Machine. I myself used to listen to this group as, as a young man, as a youth, as a lover of music, perhaps I would have said in a time past. Music of the world, music of the youth, music that one says touches you or moves you, draws you, affects you. And this group in particular struck a chord in young men particularly um, because of their message, their image, their sound, very aggressive, very but also very um, proudful, very full of pride in, in the rebellious spirit. Very much against government, against authority, against oppression and injustice and whatnot. So to the ignorant youth, the ignorant boy or girl listening to this stuff it's very impressionable because it gives you an outlet to the injustices that you come to witness as a person growing up in the world and you feel as though these individuals get it they understand they know what's going on and surely they're presenting you with hope, presenting you with truth in a very art, artistic way that you can enjoy and consume, but also identify with their message, their imagery, their appearance. Act like them and you too are against the machine, etc., 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 so, for those who don't know, according to Wiki, right, they're known for, uh, this group is known for their leftist, anti-authoritarian, and revolutionary political views, and almost all of their band's songs focus on these views. Key to the band's identity, Rage Against the Machine has voiced viewpoints highly critical of the domestic and foreign policies of current and previous U.S. governments. Throughout its existence, Rage, blah, 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 and its individual members participated in political protests and other activism to advocate these beliefs. The band sees, it, sees its music as vehicle for social activism. De La Roche, the singer, explained, I'm interested in spreading those ideas through art because music has the power to cross borders, to break military sieges, and to establish real dialogue. Real dialogue, huh? Okay, keep that in mind. So after a hiatus, the band dissolved um, years ago, more than a dec decade ago, I believe, or perhaps a decade ago, and they recently had a live show and I will play a clip of that show because it's the focus of this recording. So it's in their song called Freedom at the end. So we'll just listen to that breakdown. We don't need really okay. So this is this is what it's about. So in uh, at the end of their song, they have these messages blasting up on the screen behind them, which read: "Forced birth in a country with no universal health care." 
and where the cost of giving birth is four to fifteen thousand dollars. But forget talking about home births or alternatives. No, 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 no. Talk about the institution of the medical establishment and how unjust it is that it charges four to fifteen thousand dollars to give birth. Hmm. Okay. Forced birth. So they forced they're forcing birth. Hmm. And I will just point out that these messages don't seem to me at least that they were actually uh, written or put together by these individuals. To me, it's, if it, it seems more of like they were told to put this blasted on their screen and perhaps was the purpose of their show coming being hiatus for 10 years and then they're like, okay, go out and you have to play the show and you're going to have to blast this. These, these people are not free. These people aren't free. They say they are free freedom fighters, but they're not. And it's clear why I say these things when we look at the messages that they put out. Okay. And years later, looking back at the lyrics of this band and, and whatnot, <clears throat> it's all hot breath. It's all misguided without foundation is their message because it it leaves it still leaves um the trust in men to come out of this fiasco how be it they tell you don't trust in the government don't trust in those men but trust in other men that will come and liberate you via rebellion or via communism Right, the the communist ideal, and we'll get into that in a second. But first, let's read these messages. So this first message, hmm, okay, strange to be putting it this way: forced birth in a country with no universal health care. Okay, well, what about the other apparent grievances that people experience because there is no quote-unquote universal health care no, no 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 the focus is forced birth because that's why they went out to do the show to talk about this bash and to stir up people to blast the indoctrination forced birth in a country that is the only wealthy country in the world without any guaranteed paid parental leave at the national level. Okay, so you're going to complain about parental leave and how it's not guaranteed at the national level? What about the parental absence in the child's life that we currently have to those who do choose to have children? despite them having parental leave. Just because people g go on parental leave doesn't mean they're being a parent. Or just because there is a lack of parental leave doesn't mean that if there was, that that person would actually take it and be a parent. Most people these days don't want to be parents. They want to live for themselves. Which is why they want the choice to murder the life that's developing in them by the grace of God. So, second message is also um, strange, but also meritless, baseless. Because it's focused only on this theme right here. B birth. The woman and her ability to birth and not only the ability but her gift what does Timothy say you know by child rearing she shall attain salvation if she keep if she remaineth in truth I'm paraphrasing but um 
Let me see if I can quickly bring it up. Of course, it's not going to, it took me to this other bash site. Why does it always do that? Just keywords. Maybe it'll do it that way. Okay, well, while this searches, and if I do find it, I know it's in Timothy. Where is it? Anyway, I, th I think I'm, I'm going off topic here, but... Okay, yeah, it's right here. First Timothy two fifteen. And it's worth reading. If one does not have patience, we're to ask for it. We're to learn patience. Temperance. So says, notwithstanding, she, the woman, shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman who was deceived and fell into transgression. However, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Interesting, right? So, Returning to this, right? Forced birth in a country that is the only wealthy country. Really? What wealth is there if they're in trillion and a trillion and trillion dollars in debt? Hmm. So, again, baseless. Just made to anger people. Okay, forced birth in a country where black birth givers, why don't they just put black women? See, very politically correct, very um, calculated. That's why it doesn't seem like, I mean, what's going on here? This is pure indoctrination, where black birth givers experience maternal mortality two to three times higher than that of white birth givers. And here is where I, it's a, it's a big tell of the hypocrisy. So Della Raj, right? He is a freedom fighter right? A truther, if you will. Why doesn't he recognize that the so-called freedom that he wants to promote is the choice for these black birth givers to terminate, abort their pregnancy at their local Planned Parenthood, most likely? Does he forget that those sites are focused? There's a higher concentration of these centers in low income typically black or latino um populated areas and Pl planned parenthood was founded by margaret sanger who is a known eugenicist is it is it, is there no connecting the dots here i would expect that zach would have known these things 
he still chose to make this statement in focusing on the apparent mater maternal mortality of black birth givers is two to three times higher than that of the white birth givers. Hmm. Even if this is true, why would it prevent these um, mothers, these black mothers, from giving birth if they know the gift that it is to bring a child into the world? So it's like saying, well, you're predisposed, you're genetically predisposed to, you know, get cancer. And you're like, well, I might, I might as well not even live. Might as well just kill me. Or like, well, you're predisposed to have this and this. Well, pff, what's the point? Just kill me now. Right? I mean, certainly people don't live like that. People live as though they're saying, okay, I know that perhaps I have a history in my family of this and this and the other. So I will accordingly adjust or I'll have this or uh, you know my diet this or this or the other and you try to navigate according to that and this is without even turning to God this is purely world stand wor worldly standards for ultimately the answer is turning to Christ Jesus amen so the world again this third message falling flat on his face Why doesn't Zach care about the the black women, the the black community, and and the Latino at that 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 are being uh, mer you know, their populations are being reduced. Eugenics are being executed in their communities. But no, apparently they want to fight to have that done to them, and calling it a choice. Hmm. Hmm. And finally, forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. Forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. So therefore, forget it. The number one cause of child death is gun violence. So just kill it in the womb. Don't even, don't even think of having a child because they're going to get killed by a gun. So it might as well just kill it inside of you before it even comes out. Don't worry. You do you don't you don't want your child to get killed by a gun, do you? So just fear, fear, fear. I mean, this 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 last one is laughable. I mean, they're, they all are, but this one in particular is laughable. Forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. I mean, talk about misleading at best. And of course, it's, it's again, baseless. Forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death. So therefore, not even worth, don't even think that your child is going to live and have uh, a, a life, a long <clears throat> life where he can come to know his creator and worship and live the life that he was created to live. No, 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 just kill it in the womb. Okay. This is why this whole group, this band is just nonsense they represent the antichrist spirit they represent the rebellious contentious supremacy false supremacy and at the end they say aboard the supreme court wow that's supposed to be like wow the best message ever wow so they want lawlessness. That's totally antichrist. In place of Christ, lawlessness. And they call that choice. The choice to do whatever you want. <sighs> Even to murder your own child. 
and to instill in you the fear of that it's wrong for you to want to bring a child into the world. It's wrong for you to choose life. It's wrong for you to seek the Lord. It's wrong for you to trust the Lord. It's wrong for you to endure the hardships of life in the world for His name's sake. It's wrong of you to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as thyself because your neighbor just wants to go out and do whatever they want. That can change on the flip of a dime. One day it's this and the other day it's that. So, <clears throat> and this is just one group, right, that's been around for decades and not to mention all the other bands out there that their whole the whole point is to just bash the youth smash them who are they saluting they're saluting saluting lawlessness and right here the beginning of this noam chomsky is the most quoted intellectual alive today his books have helped me understand the nature of globalization and its effects on people and societies throughout the world. I spoke with him at MIT, where he is a professor of linguistics. Thank you for... So, he, his idol, if you will, everything that he knows, apparently, about globalism, he learned from Noam Chomsky. So, looking to men to, re to instill his mind to organize his mind according to man's wisdom instead of turning to the Lord and trusting in him so first Samuel 15 23 says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So this is Samuel telling Saul, right? But rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So who are these people rebelling against? And you say, oh, well, the oppressive government. White men in, in office. White Christian men that are in office that have been oppressing the world forever. What a shame. Baseless. They're rebelling against God. Ultimately. Without even knowing it. Because they think that they're rebelling against an authority, which they would call the government. But. Those who come to the Lord understand that the there is no authority other than the authority of God. Man and his rule can cannot rule without any authority if it wasn't for the authority of God. He can man can think that he puts laws in place and take laws away and bash bash this this is and relative 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 this and this and based on his understanding and morality. But in the end, it all will have to be referenced to the standard of the law of God. He is righteous. He is righteous. He is just. He is love. He is holy. Amen. And something I find very common in these leftist, you know, revolutionary types, they idolize the... Uh, the com the communist ideal right the the worker and this fighting for this the worker rights and whatever so i wanted to mention that real quick because in acts 2 and in acts 4 in acts 2 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear can, came upon every soul. They were in awe. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. 
and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. So to, um, in reference to the recording I have previously made about boasting, about setting goals for, you know, how many people you want to add. You say, okay, let's get a thousand subscribers at, by the end of today. All right. Quotas, quotas. No. Right here. The Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. Such as should be saved. Just the right amount. Just the right number. Amen. So Acts 4 then talks about 4.32. We'll go to that right quick. Okay. Oh. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them ought, excuse me, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed, which was his own. So none of them claimed ownership of, of things, of possessions. Rather, they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that there were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Very interesting, right? And one could easily carnally mind uh, thinking carnally would say, oh, this is, this is, this is communism. No, it is not. This is a description of how the Christians lived awaiting the return of Christ. Because after the return of Christ happened, they would reign for a thousand years with Christ under the, 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 the rulership of the kingdom. And Jesus spoke multiple times in, in parables throughout his ministry of what that would be like. And he spoke of how he's, he said, well, you guys answer to rulers and they answer to rulers and, and there's a hierarchy and this and this and the other. He's like, but it's not like that in the kingdom. Right? He who is great is the least. There's There's... An, an equality based on righteousness, based on the standard of God, where there is lack of nothing. Amen. So, to assume that uh, the Christians were communists is a grave error because you would fall into supporting the ideals of communism, the political ideology what communism is is a substitute of the authority of god over the people because what what does it say that they had they 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 were of one heart and one of one soul under christ christ being the head of the body which are the members in the body of christ the members of are, are the believers in the body of Christ of which Christ is the head and the head of Christ is God the Father. Amen. So these people live this way because they had as their Godhead because they had Christ. As their standard. They believe on the Son of God. So, what does communism believe in? Um, small government, this and the other, 
taxes, the um, idolizing of the worker, this and this, all these ideals but that are in place of Christ. They're antichrist. They replace Christ with a government, a father figure, who apparently knows how to take care of his children. So it's a, it's an antichrist beast system, and now they call it socialism or um, so a cap a social capitalism or whatever these terms they want to bring about and deceive people with. But they promote an antichrist beast system that is totally a misrepresentation of true holiness what living in in love is and what doing the will of God is what doing what worshipping God in spirit and in truth is all about Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will, I will repay, saith the Lord. Ultimately, God is the standard. He is the distributor of justice. The one who can only give according to what one truly merits deserves stored up if you stored up your entire life if you stored up wrath your entire life well you guessed it you will, will be the recipient of that if you stored if you sowed unto the spirit spiritual things you too shall reap spiritual things by the grace of God So, <clears throat> when man goes out to seek his own vengeance and rage against the machine, that is a recipe for darkness, for the enemy to rule over you. All the while they boast and say, know your enemy, and this and this and that. All the while they coax you into being the enemy of God, right? For love not the things of the world. For if you, anyone who's a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Yeah. Amen. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He hath acknowledged the Son, hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, eternal life so let not those seduce you from the truth be not deceived little children abide in him in Christ those who believe on him abide in him and he in the Father. And hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby, we, hereby know we that we are in him. 
He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Jesus Christ is the example by which to follow after. And with his righteousness and his faith, we are able to. Not by our own righteousness, but because of his. Amen. So I'll leave it at that. Just uh, something that I had seen recently and remind me of how I, I used to like this group um, many years ago and how I now see them again performing and posting these, blasting these messages as if they were somehow virtuous. Abide in the Lord and be not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen.